I recently shifted to Bengaluru for work. Although I've known the city for many years, it feels very different from my usual workspaces. I'm a battery researcher and conservationist. My work has taken me to the mountains of Uttarakhand and the Andaman Islands to study these fascinating creatures. But these days, my search for bats is in urban spaces, currently in the sprawling city of Bengaluru. This is right where people are walking and nobody would imagine there's so many bats roosting inside. Finding bats in this dense and busy city of over 10 million people is both chaotic and exciting. I'm sure almost every second house here has a bat living somewhere in its corners. As the sun sets in the city, I can see many potential habitats for bats. Hmm, looks promising. I have no clue what that sound was. Sounds strange noise. Different species of bats uh, tend to call at different frequencies. And as a bat call comes, this bat detector shows you the graph. Looking at the structure of the graph, uh, you, can, you can identify the different species of bats in Bangalore. Oh, bat, 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 yeah. I just spotted a greater yellow house bat but I couldn't quite tell whether it was indeed a greater yellow house bat or another species. The reason being that if you notice, there's constant background noise uh, which is coming from the street light that we are standing under. And these are some of the challenges of recording bats in urban areas. There's either very high traffic noise or even when you are in a street that looks quiet, there's a lot of electrical noise that this ultrasound detector picks up. So let's try and find this bat somewhere else. There's a people tree. If it fruits, maybe it will be a good place for flying foxes. I'm searching for this tree common in Bengaluru that bats just love. Hmm, bat, 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 bat. This was most likely an Egyptian fetal bat that quickly flew over. Oh, there, there, there. Yeah, short note. There, just look. Yeah. It's buzzing with short-nosed fruit bats right now. There are at least five or six different individuals that are constantly coming and dropping at different parts of the Singapore chair. And in fact, there's, there's this one there right now. And if you stand under any Singapore cherry in Bangalore at any given time of the year, you have a 100% chance of seeing short-nosed fruit bats. Beautiful bats to look at. I venture into busier and noisier streets. This is nothing like the bat habitats I've been studying all these years. Super busy marketplace, nothing on the bat detector. But that's not to say that bats can't exist in such an area. We're seeing photographs of short-nosed fruit bats coming uh, into busy marketplaces, grabbing bananas from fruit sellers and, you know, flying away. And who knows, something like this could also take place in one of these markets in Bangalore. So nothing now, just um, traffic noise. Now they've all dispersed into their individual territories. So we'll probably not detect a lot of activities on a busy street like this. The older neighbourhoods of Bengaluru had houses with trees in their compounds, almost as if they were inviting bats to share the space. These houses also had crevices and spaces in their construction where I usually spotted a bat or two. I 
I'm standing uh, on a terrace in central Bangalore and in between these houses are a couple of fruiting trees. Particularly, I'm impressed by this dried coconut tree. You would think that it's dry and it wouldn't serve any purpose, but the dried leaves are drooping in such a manner that it's, it's an excellent sleeping place for a bat. Yeah, I hope that bat comes back. I want to figure out what exactly it was trying to do. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, it looks like a very good roost, but maybe this individual isn't the one roosting here. So maybe this could be, you know, the bat might be looking for a night roost. So far, individual bat sightings have been good, but I want to find a roosting spot where I can get a closer look at a bat society. This intrigues me, especially in a city. My old friend Rajesh, he's the best person for this. He's been studying bats in Bengaluru for years and knows some of the best spots in the city for sightings. We can just take a quick look inside. Sure, sure. Look, look. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> we have about uh, almost 5,000 rosetas listed here, the full bus food bats, and it's a cave dwelling bat. They were all along the frames, you know, not on the ceiling, but Correct. all along the frames. Correct. I think wherever they have good grips, I think most of them are fighting for those grips. Probably there are a couple of generations of bats here which are not seen a cave. They all been born and brought up in this uh, building, abandoned building, and uh, now we've moved them to a cave. Who knows whether uh, how far they'll be able to adapt. Bats are one of the most adaptable uh, animals, I would say. One uh, example I can quote you is the Snyder's leaf nose bat, which we find uh, even in uh, campus of IASC, and recently we documented the same species in the Parsi Tower of Silence. This bat. Uh, has a different call frequency outside of Bangalore versus the inside Bangalore. So the bat has really adapted within a short distance. Rajesh has told me about a lake in the middle of the city where I can see hundreds of bats emerge in the evening and set out in search of food. Here? Oh, there. Then. They're basically getting ready. I mean, just like how we would wake up, brush our teeth. That's their daily routine. <laughs> Amazing. Watching countless bats begin their day in a spot where hundreds of people come to relax is a new sight for me. They're all over the place and they're all roosting in, you know, different directions. <laughs> Amazing. This is right where people are walking and nobody would imagine there's so many bats roosting inside. Amazing. They go down to the water, the surface of the water. They make a splash with their chest. They head off to the nearest tree and drink water from the from the fur, you know, from the wet fur. And all of this, you know, by the way, is happening right bang in the middle of the city, a city of seven, eight million people. Whenever I see a bat, I do feel happy. And at the same time, I feel the sense of wonder that of this animal that can fly and do everything that, uh, you know, humans are completely, and most other mammals are also completely incapable of doing. It is a majestic sight to observe them flying over one of India's largest cities. Hopefully, this is a sight that shall remain for a long time in our ever-expanding cities.